Hi, Dustin Lee here from Retro Supply, and today I'm going to show you how to create a seamless texture in Photoshop. For my purposes, I'm creating it to create an effect like this where we have this wood type style effect. And to do that, it's really useful um, to have a texture like this. So the first thing you're going to need is a good texture. I have a big resource or a big library of these kind of textures because my site retrosupply.co sells like all sorts of different stuff like this. So I've accumulated a library of textures similar to this. If you wanted to grab some of those, you can go to retrosupply.co and you can extract them from products like super grain or uh, American wood type, but you can also buy them for free or I'm sorry, not buy them, but get them for free on a site like lostandtaken.com fantastic site full of free textures that you can use. So once you have your texture, go ahead and paste it into your Photoshop file. And then you're just going to move that texture down to the corner. And so you know, I'm working on a 2000 by 2000 canvas because I want a large seamless texture. So it can be applied to all sorts of projects. Next, I'm going to click Option Shift and I'm going to drag this up. Once I have these two, I'm going to highlight both of them and then select Merge Layers. Then I get the rectangle marquee tool, select part of the texture again, and I'm going to choose option shift again, and I'm going to drag and bring this over here. So now I've essentially stitched together a texture across my 2000 by 2000 canvas. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the entire canvas with my rectangular marquee tool, and then I'm going to choose add layer mask go to the layer mask that just appeared, right click on it, and then apply layer mask. And what that's done is that's basically cropped the edges here so there's no longer any like stray texture coming off that we can't see that would mess us up in a future step. So now that we fixed that, we wanna get our clone stamp. And as you can see, I have a brush with kind of an organic look to it. This is actually from the Retro Supply Turbo Textures Pack. Um, which you can grab on retrosupply.co. Um, but you can also Google and find something similar to this by just searching for like Photoshop organic brushes or maybe Photoshop like ink splatter brushes or something of that nature. Basically, you just want some sort of brush with an organic feel to it. And I'm going to click Option Alt and just start painting over these areas that have the lines so we no longer have this kind of stitching type look of the texture. And as you can see, this is pretty easy work because the texture in its own lends itself to the edges blending well, because just because it's so organic. Okay, awesome. So here's where we make it seamless. First, I'm going to convert it to a smart object, and that's just going to make sure we get a smooth transition when we do this next step. And then I'm going to go to Filter, Other, Offset, and you'll notice, or actually it's not set to that, but what I need to set it to is a thousand horizontal by a thousand vertical. And the reason I'm doing that is that moves everything, since the canvas is 2000 by 2000, that moves everything 50% over um, horizontally and 50% over vertically so that I can see all of these seams here and I can use the clone stamp tool once again. First I need to rasterize the layer again. So now I can use the clone stamp and I can once again get rid of all of these areas that are not seamless. So basically what we're doing at this point is we're getting those edges that we couldn't see before and we're actually making them, well, we're making them disappear. Okay, looks like we've got them all, but let's try. I always like to offset it one more time so I can see, did I miss any lines? Is something missing? And then I'll often kind of slide these sliders around. It's just a good way of double checking that there's no lines that you missed. And it looks like we've done a good job here. So you can press cancel since that worked. And then this isn't necessary, but oftentimes what you're going to want to do is you want to go to your adjustments and I'm going to go up to my levels here and I'm going to increase the contrast a bit. The reason being that for my particular uses for this, I need to make sure that I have a nice strong white as well as a nice strong black. So I'm kind of just cutting the, I guess bandwidth you'd call it, essentially to make sure that we're getting some really pure blacks and really pure whites, while also keeping the subtle differences in color as well. Okay, looks good. Now I can just select these layers, go to edit, 
define pattern and then we just name this pattern and this is actually going to be part of a pack that retro supply is offering so i'm just going to type in the name of that wood and ink oh, oh, four press ok and then if i was to delete these layers now i could go down to the bottom and i can choose create a new pattern and you'll see here the pattern is and we can make it smaller and as you can see it's seamless there's no lines now if you get small enough any pattern is going to start to look like it's repeating it's just the nature of patterns but if you keep it around 100 percent i'd say anywhere from like 75 to 100 percent it's going to work great um, which is exactly what we want to use it for but it really depends on the size of your canvas and how you're using it um, so that is how you create a seamless pattern in photoshop I hope you found that helpful and please let me know if I can answer any questions or help you out. I am happy to do that. Thanks for watching.